mo ginoo ang kabigilutan. Huwag sa inong kaugalingong mga kamot, ipuha ko ang mga lang. Ikaw ang Diyos na nagpuha ko sa nang may kinabuhi. Arun makasay, Galilo! Maayong buntag sa tanan. Um, before we proceed sa at pagdai o pagsimba na sa Ginoo, no? I ask everyone to open your Bibles to Malachi chapter 1. For the past few weeks, no, for the past few days, we have been constantly reminded no sa atong mga pastors, sa atong mga leaders that this pandemic is the perfect time for us no to get closer to sa Ginoo. To strengthen our relationship with God. And the best way to do this is what? Prayer and worship. Worship indeed is doing everything for the glory of God. But the question right th this morning is, are we worshiping God in the right attitude? Are we worshiping God wholeheartedly? Because Malachi 1 is the perfect example of people Worshipping God, but it is unacceptable, diha sa ginoo. Why? Because God's law required that only perfect animals to be offered to God. Kanin sa chapter 1. But priests were allowing the people to offer blind, crippled, and deceased animals, diha sa ginoo. And sir, if you will open 
our Bible, so Romans 1, nag-ingon dito, sa the New Testament says that our lives should be a living sacrifice to God. So now, if we give God only our leftover time, if we give God our leftover money, if we give God our leftover energy, then we are repeating the same sin as these worshippers did no, sa Malachi chapter 1. No, they sacrificed to God wrongly through what? No, be, uh, being uh, cheap as possible. They neglected. No, they disobeyed sa ginoo. And this is seen as an unacceptable worship. No, is our heart wholeheartedly worshiping God in this time? Because we have at the natay taas atong oras karun, but still, no night times we fail. No, it's a struggle. That's why this afternoon, no, we ask God, na, na He will give us strength, na para maka battle tanin sa tong kinabuhi. So right now, I ask everyone to stand up. Let us worship our God as we sing songs and worship praises the Hasayaha. No, he is worthy to be praised, Karong Kabuntagon. No, let this let us be an attitude of worship this again, wholeheartedly singing for God. Not only singing, but in everything we do, we do it for the glory of God. Just worship his name. Heavenly Father, Lord, just worship your name, O oh God. Just glorify your name. You are the God that we serve. You're the same God that Moses served. You're the same God that David served. Lord, you are our God. You are supreme in our lives. Heavenly Father, we just pray, O oh God, Lord, that you will cleanse our hearts and minds. Karong kamutagon, O God, na ikaw lamang ang manday, O God. Walay lain, O God, Lord. Lord, we ask for your strength, O God, to sustain us, O God. Lord, indeed, O God, Lord, tao lang kami, O God, Lord, Kasala kami, O God. Salamat, O God, Lord. Sa imong grasya, imong ipakita, O God, Lord. Sa cross, O God, Lord, ikaw nagpakamatay para ka na mo, O God, Lord. Ang ayan, kadayin gun, O God. Ayon kasimbahon ka, O God. Let's continue to worship. Ang simbahon na ito, Gino. Simba, ikayaw ang atong kamot Mulukso, mulukso, musayaw Musingik o maghugyaw Balaan, damlay ko ng Diyos Karun ang adlaw sa Diyos Karun ang adlaw sa pagdaig o pagsimba Ibayaw Atong kamu Mulukso Musayaw Musingit O magugaw Bala Gamhanan Ang Diyos Dahil kung Kung ikaw O Diyos na nabing Gamhanan Magtuboy ka Sa among pagsimba O Diyos na ay kausaban Hangtod sa kahangturan Daigon ko ikaw So ay katapusan Karong ang adlaw sa Diyos Karong ang adlaw sa pagdaig Pagsimba Bayaw ang atong gamot Mulukso, musayaw, 
Simbahun ka Diyos nga gamhanan Baga simbahun ka Baga awitan Baga awitan ka Diyos nga balaan Baga simbahun ka Ikaw ang nabuhan Sa kalahitan Ikaw ang Diyos nga nabuhat sa kalibutan Ikaw ang Diyos nga nabuhat sa tanang may kinabuhi Aroon sa pagaday sa imong alam Pagkasimbahon, pagkasimbahon ka Pagkasimbahon ka Pagkawitan, pagkawitan ka Diyos nga balahan, pagkasimbahon ka Pagkasimbahon, pagkasimbahon ka Diyos nga gamanan Pagkasimbahon ka Pagkawitan Pagkawitan ka Diyos nga balaan Pagkasimbahon ka Pagkasimbahon ka Pagkasimbahon ka Ikaw lamang, O God, Lord, ang amung simbahon, O God. You are worthy, O God, Lord. You are worthy to be praised, O God. Let 
me to the grave I had no hope that you would all able to your will And if you love not let me fall, I will
Nothing can compare. Come, let us adore. Oh, yeah. Thank you, God, Lord, for your presence, God, Lord, this morning, oh God. Let's pray, oh God, Lord. Let's continue, oh God, Lord, to study your word, oh God, Lord. So find your word, oh God. Just pray, oh God, Lord, that you will apply it in our lives, oh God, Lord. Retain it in our lives, oh God, Lord. And then even share it, oh God, Lord, to our friends, oh God. We just worship your name, oh God. We just glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Strong, sweet, and kind. A name we call mom. Hands that holds when things get rough. She lends to us a listening ear, and velvet love is what she makes us feel. Her, Her skin, skin is wrinkled and wrong from, from daily, daily work. work. As she continues to mold us by God's book. And though she ages, her love knows no such thing. Instead, it in her wisdom and knowledge shines a golden ring. Compassion is what flows in her bloodstream. And, and our heart, heart after God, God is her prayer and dream. And, and for us to be bound in His word alone. And our lives to believe for His glory in this world. With the gospel of Christ's grace, her mind is illumined. And her goodness is not blown away like chaff in the wind. Humility is in this old creed that she is raised. The charm is deceitful, beauty is good. But the woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Happy, Happy Mother's Day! Happy Lord's Day to all. Once again, welcome to our live streaming program of Living Word South Morning Service. Praise God for another Sunday. Salamat sa ginoo nga padayon ang iyang pag-sustain ka nato bisang paman sa mga panghitabo karon. And indeed, God is good. And Happy Lord's Day ninyong tanan. Now, last Sunday, we are studying about book of James chapter 1, verse 1 to verse 12. And now, we will be studying verse 13 to verse 18. And if you have your Bible, you can open with me in verse 13 to verse 18. And this is what the Bible says. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and entice. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, give birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from God, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruit of all he created. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, God, for this wonderful day. We thank you, Lord, that indeed you are sovereign, mighty, in power. And you are the God, the creator of heaven and earth. 
You are the God of Abraham, you are the God of Isaac, you are the God of Jacob, the God that we are serving. Holy Spirit, teach us as we study your word. Help us not just to hear your word, but to walk according to your will. And Father, kung sa manggani ang among makabot karon, ikaw regyod ang pasidunggan, pasalamatan, sa ngala ni Sos. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now, one of the greatest challenges of living the Christian life is dealing with temptation. And we might ask ourselves, where does temptation come from? Temptation defines as the desire of longing for wrong things. Things that God forbids and that are harmful to our human bodies and spirit. Warren Worsby put it this way, Temptation is an opportunity to accomplish a good thing in a wrong way outside the will of God. Now, say for example, as a student, it is not wrong to desire to pass an examination. However, if you cheat to do so, then you have sinned. Cheating is accomplishing a good thing like passing an exam in a wrong way. Now, even if we justify and say that it is acceptable, but if it is wrong in the sight of God, then it is wrong. When we decide things outside the will of God, then we are tempted to do evil and we are to flee from that evil temptation. Now in James chapter 1, verse 13 to verse 18, we will find a helpful words for a Christian to understand that in verse 13, temptation is not of God. From verse 14 to verse 16, temptation is by man through his own evil desire. And from verse 14 of verse 17 to verse 18, temptation is not of the nature of God. Now go to verse 13. It says, <clears throat> Let no one say, when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt by anyone. Notice the word when. Let no one say when he is tempted. It is not if, it is when. Meaning to say, that temptation will come in our life anytime, anywhere. Man always blaming someone else for tempting him and leading him to sin. The truth of the matter is that it is our culture of blaming others for sin. And the worst thing is that people even blame God for their own wrongdoing. When Adam and Eve fell to sin, and God found Adam and asked him what had happened, Adam tried to escape from guilt, and he said in Genesis chapter 3, verse 12, Well, God, the woman whom you give me tempted me. So what does it mean? Well, Adam tried to avoid guilt. And then God turned to Eve and said, Well, Eve, what happened? In Genesis chapter 3, verse 13, Eve replied, Well, the serpent deceived me. Now, the point is this. 
Man will not take responsibility for his own wrongdoing. Now here's a practical example. A husband blames his wife and the wife blames the husband. Children blames the parents and the parents blames children. Student blames the teacher and the teacher blames the school. Employer blames the employee and employee blames the employer and so on and so on and so on. We must accept the responsibility of our wrongdoing and face consequences of what we have done. Because the Bible says, when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. Listen to this verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. This is what the Bible declares. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, listen to this. He will also provide a way so that you can endure it. Now listen to this praise. But when you are tempted, meaning anytime when you will be tempted, God will provide a way. So it is not right, Og mo ingon tawel, tao ramang yung ko, maonang nisipyat ko. Well, listen to this verse. God will what? Provide a way so that you can endure it. So we cannot make an excuses na nisipyat ra yung ko. Ang sa nahimong sa Ang temptation na himong sa, why? Because you embrace the temptation. Temptation itself is not a sin. But it only becomes a sin once you will embrace the temptation. The Bible declares temptation is common to every person. Why? Because there's no temptation that is unique. All of us, ikaw ng ako, na ay tentasyon every and every day. Why is that? Because that is the ministry of the devil to tempt God's people. But here's the thing. We Christians are not alone in our temptation. We can call God to deliver us from temptation. God personally provides a specific way of escape. Therefore, when temptation comes, immediately remember the cross and focus upon Jesus Christ and pray and read the passage of Scripture. Don't just justify your wrongdoing by blaming someone else, just like Adam. Adam? Well, he blames God for giving him a woman that he didn't ask. Notice this praise. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. First and foremost, God cannot be tempted with evil. Why? God is holy, God is righteous, and God is pure. Therefore, God had nothing to do with evil or temptation. And the second thing is God does not tempt any person. God loves, God cares, God saved man and not to destroy his body and spirit. When a person is tempted to do harmful things, it is not from God. It is of the devil. God wants person to turn away and flee from temptation, not to embrace temptation. Now, listen to this verse. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. Flee the evil desire of your youth 
and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of what? Out of pure heart. Listen, flee the evil desire of your youth. The desire that is within. Now listen to James chapter 4 verse 1. Where do the conflicts and where do the quarrels among you came from? Listen, is it not from your passions that battle inside you? So here's the thing, mga egsoon. Our problem is not outside. Our problem is inside. And that's the reason why the heart of every problem is the problem of the heart. Ang imong problema dili ang imong bana nga sipat, dili ang imong anak nga sipat, dili ang imong silingan nga sipat, but here's your problem. It is your heart. And that's the reason why James says, where do the conflict and where do the quarrels among you came from? Is it not from this from your passion that battle inside you? It is inside. Our problem is our heart. Now, in verse 14 to verse 16, temptation is by man own evil desire. Listen to verse 14. But each one, many say no one is exempted, each one is tempted. When? When he is drawn away by his own desires and entice. Sabi ni Saya, Apan mo abot ang tintasyon kun ang tao hay luon o danihon sa iyang dautang tinguha. The word last means to desire. And to desire is to desire good and to desire bad things and we need to understand that it is normal desires are given to us by God desires is normal it is from God in fact without desire we could not function as human being desires are not necessarily wrong it is when we satisfy our desires in way outside the will of God and we get into trouble. O ang atong mga pangandoy, ninggawas na sa kabubuton sa Diyos, then that is now the problem. Here's a normal example. Example, eating is normal, but gluttony is seen. Sleeping is normal, but laziness is sin. To have money is normal, but greediness towards money is sin. Marriage between man and woman is normal, but same-sex marriage is sin. Why? It is abomination or disgrace in the sight of God. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 27, this is what the Bible says. God created man in his own image. He created him male and female. He created them. And that's the reason why in the sight of God, sin six is a big sin. It is not normal. The problem arises in life when the thing we desire is forbidden or things outside the will of God. This is the very beginning stage of temptation. Now listen to verse 15. It says, Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. Unya ang iyang dautang tinguha manamkon Og mga nak og sala. Now man is tempted by his own lustful desire. 
When a person begins to look and think about forbidden things, he will start to picture the pleasure of desires. And the result, it will give birth to sin. Now, if we put into mathematical formula for sin, it pictures like this. Picture... Sin equals desire plus opportunity plus action equals sin. Let me give you a story about the life of David. In 2 Samuel chapter 11, Usaka Adlao ni Ana, Si David nagpaurara ingat to sa iyang rooftop, sa iyang templo. Then what happened? Nakita niya ang usa ka gwapa nga babae sa swimming pool. Iyang nakita. Gikan siyang mata, of course. Then ang iyang heart nagdesire sa maong babae. Now to make the long story short, Iyang gipakuha ang maong babae, ang sa maong babae si Bathsheba. If you read 2 Samuel from chapter 11 to chapter 12 onward. And to make the long story short, iyang gipahimuslan si Bathsheba. Nan karon kay si Bathsheba ang iyang bana, usaman sa iyang military. So what he did, ang bana ni Bathsheba nga mao sa si Uriah, Iyang gipaataki nga to sa gira nga klaro kayong mamatay. So what happened? Namatay ang bana ni Batsiba dito sa maong gira. So atong tanahon, pila mang kabuok ang sa ni David. Ang first gang sa, adultery, kaya nang hilabot man siya sa babae nga doon bana. Ang ikaduha niyang sa, murder. So, duha ang iyang sa nga nahimo. Bunga sa sa nga iyang gidesire una doon ay opportunity o niya iyang put into action. So, nakahimo siya og sa nga duha. Adultery and murder. But look at the consequences. Look at the consequences. Listen to this. Ang iyang consequences first, ang anak niya kang Batsiba after one week na matay. Now, ang sikan nga nahitabo, ang iyang anak nga babae, girape sa iyang anak sa lain nga asawa. Can you imagine that? Ang iyang anak nga babae, Girape sa iyang anak nga si Amnon. After two years, kining si Amnon nga nag sa iyang igsoon, half-sister nga si Tamar, gipatay sa iyang igsoon nga si Absalom. So pila na kabuok, tulo na kabuok. Ang iyang anak, kambatsiba, namatay. Ang iyang anak, sa laing asawa, Girip sa iyong anak, ang iyong anak na nagpatay, nagrip sa iyong anak, gipatay sa iyong anak. But we are not finished yet. Si Absalom na iyong anak na nagpatay sa iyong pong half-brother, nagkudita kang David. Nagkudita. Gusto niyang pulihan ang iyong amahan. Now, pila na upat na. Si Absalom, pinangga kay ni ni David, mga Ison. Pinangga kayo. Og na matay si Absalom sa iyang pagkodita. Og imong tanahon, ang consequences, wala mo gawas nga to sa gawas sa pamilya. Naara sa sulod sa iyang pamilya ang consequences. Di nagsugod because of what? Because of his desire. And then he put it into action. And that's the reason why 
the equation of sin, it will add to your trouble, it will subtract your energy and multiply, multiply your difficulties in life. Sige, no misus nag-warning. In book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 28, but I say unto you that whoever look on a woman to last after her had committed adultery with her already in his heart. Sa kasing-kasing mga egsoon. And that's the reason why it's so clear in book of Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23. The Bible declares, Above all else, guard your heart for it is the wellspring of life. In book of Jeremiah chapter 17, it says, For I the Lord search the heart and mind, and heart is deceitful above all things. God knows your heart and my heart. And we need to guard our heart because it is the wellspring of life. Now go to verse 15, the second phrase. It says, Sin with it is full grown brings forth death. O, inigkahingkod na sa sala, Magdala kini o what? Kamatayon. Kamatayon. Nay duha ka kamatayon nga atong isgutan karon. The physical death and spiritual death. When God created man, he did not create man to die. Wala ang Ginoo mag magdesign og tao aron mamatay. But there's a problem. Man dies because of sin. Namatay ang tao, ang hinungdan sa kamatayon sa tao tungod sa sala. Romans chapter 5, verse 12. This is what the Bible declares. Mi abot sa kalibutan ang sala, pinaagi sa usa ka tao. Kinsa man eh? Si Adan. O ang sala nagdala, o kung saman, kamatayon. So, ning abot ang sa, ang ning abot ang kamatayon tungod sa sala. Busa, mi kailap ang kamatayon nga to sa tanang katawhan. Kay nakasalaman ang tanang tao. Notice the praise, nakasalaman ang tanang tao, including you and I. Kitang tanan makasasa. And that's the reason why in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1, the Bible declares, Mga patay ka mo tungod sa inyong mga sala. Apan ang gisulutan ni Pablo dito, mga buhi, apang gitawag niyang mga patay ka mo. Why? Listen to the letter of Paul to the Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22. It says, Kay ingon nga nga matay ang tanang mga tao. Tungod sa ilang unsaman, pagkahiusa kang Adan. Notice the praise. Nangamatay ang tanang mga tao tungod sa ilang pakigusa kang Adan, banhaon usab ang tanan tungod sa ilang pakighiusa kang Kristo. Now, ang pulong nagingon, ang tanan na kahiusa kang Adan mamatay. And in the other side, apan ang nakahiusa kang Kristo, mabuhi o makabaton o ginabuhing dayon. Now, here's my question. Ang pangutana yung ane, sa imong estado karon di in ka man nahiusa. Kang Adan or kang Kristo? O kang Adan paghihapon ka, well, igsoon, higala, ang imong abdan, kinabuhing dayon ngadto sa imperno. Why? And that's the reason why kinahanglan nato maka makighiusa diha kang Kristo. How? Dili ka kinahanglan nga musod og laing relihiyon. Ang imong gikinahanglan aron ka makihiusa kang Kristo tuuhi ang iyang gibuhat 
sa cross sa Kalbaryo 2,000 years ago, dawata si Kristo nga imong Diyos o manunubos sa imong kinabuhi. And then the Bible declares, Ikaw mahimong anak sa Diyos. To those who believe and receive in His name, He give the right to become a children of God. Na dihang na himo kang children of God, nga naman, kay nakighiusa man ka kang Kristo. Apan sa imong pagkatao, sa akong pagkatao, ikaw gako naapa sa pakighiusa kang Adan. And that's the reason why you need to be what? You need to be spiritually alive. You need to be born again. Born again is not a religion. To be born again is what? Nga ikaw ma-reconcile sa Diyos, pinaagi kang Kristo. Now, what is the difference between physical death and spiritual death? Unsay kalahian sa gitawag natong physical death na to sa spiritual death. Now, listen to this. Si Pablo, ning suwat sa mga taga-Kurinto, sa iyang ikaduhang suwat, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8. Ikaw ni Pablo, To be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. Sa ito pa, ang physical death di ay ang pagbiyara sa lawas. O niya ang may tabo sa iyang spirito, makiguban nga ito kang Kristo. To be absent in the body. Nga nung doon naman siya'y assurance, mga egson, kay nga naman, nang suwat siya sa Pilipos, Kapitulo 1, versikulo 21, ingon niya, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Nga nung sigurado siya sa iyong kaluwasan, tungod sa iyong pagkinabuhi sa kalibutan, nakihiusa siya kang Kristo. Daily kang Adan. Kang Kristo. Mauna na kayo siya, For me to live is Christ, and dying is gain. Why? It is just to be absent in the body. Then what about Christ? Is spiritually dead or is spiritual dead? Is spiritual dead is what we call separation of soul from God eternally. Nahimulag ang tao ngadto sa Dios. Remember during the creation of man. Now sa dihang si Adan ug Eva, na asya sa gitawag na tong Silang duha, giintrust na ginoo nila ang gitawag na itong Garden of Eden. Ingon sa ginoo, Well, you can eat everything except this tree of knowledge. Because the day you will eat, you will surely die. Genesis chapter 2 verse 17. For the day you will eat, you will surely die. Now the question is, Pilaman ang edad ni Adan siya na matay. Genesis chapter 5 verse 5, it says 930 years old. So unsa man nga kamatayon ang ilang nahiaguman. Ang tawag anang nga kamatayon igsoon na himulad ang ilang relasyon ngadto sa Diyos. Naputol ang ilang relasyon ngadto sa Diyos. Giyunsa ni pag-explain sa Biblia. Here's the thing. In book of Matthew chapter 7, verse 22, this is what the Bible declares. Many will say, in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name Cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name. And then I will declare to them, I will never know you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Now, how in the world that Jesus Christ says you practice lawlessness? In fact, kining mga tauhana nagusa sila. Lord, we prophesy. We cast out demons. We do miracles in your name. Ngano naging uman si Kristo? 
you who practice lowliness. Lowliness. Why? Because in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, it says, Not all who call to me, Lord, 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 can enter the kingdom of God, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Nga saan to pa, kinahanglan ni mo og nako, you need to what? You need to establish to be reconciled to God only through Jesus Christ. How? Listen once again. Not all who call to me, Lord, 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 can enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does, listen, he, he only, he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Question, what is the will of the Father? This is the will of the Father. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 23. And this is His commandments, that we believe in the name of His Son. We believe in the name of His Son. You see? Even we have to read the Bible from Genesis down to Revelation. There's only one thing. It talks about Jesus Christ. Pangayisong. Si Kristo ra diri ang gihisgutan. Aron ikaw o ako makabaton o kinabuhing dayan. But what if wala ka ma-reconcile ngadto sa Dios pinaagi kang Kristo? And that is what we called eternal death. Here's the formula. Nga nung doon ay gitawag na itong eternal death. Desire plus opportunity plus action equals sin. That is what happened to David. And sin plus no forgiveness equals eternal death. Muna kinahanglan ni mo karon, ikaw o ako, aron may balik nga sa Diyos, you need to kneel down before God. Ask forgiveness and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now here's the question. How to overcome temptation? The first thing is change your desire. Remember, desire is from heart. Change your desire. Listen to Psalm 119, verse 11. It says, Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Your word I have hidden in my heart. Meaning, you need to saturate your life. You need to expose your life to the word of God. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 2, it says, You need to set your mind on things above, not on the earthly things. You need to change your desire from horizontal view to vertical view. And then the second thing, you need to limit your exposure. What does it mean? Limit your exposure. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, it says, Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habit. Meaning to say, do not panultihon niya daging on, tell me who your friends are and I will tell you who you are. Now, ang imong karon kinahangla ng imong environment, imo ng pilion. Don't tell me na makita nti ka tuwa ka dito sa kabarit o niya mo yung malabyan ka dito. Brad, bagong sa mga diha. O suway ko witness, pastor. O maunay, o witness ni mo, palayo. Ayaw pagpaduol nga to sa mga butang nga mawoy huyang kandihan na pita. O niya, ang, ang ikatulong butang, you need to exercise self-control. Change your desire, limit your exposure. Exercise self-control. How? Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. 
to verse 23, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long sufferings, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, listen, self-control. Against such, there is no law. Notice here. Self-control is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. But there's one thing. According to the book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 16, in order for you to exercise self-control, you need to walk by the Spirit. So that you will not gratify the desire of your flesh. You need to walk by the Spirit. So meaning, this flesh must be controlled by the Holy Spirit. And the product would be what? Self-control. Amen? Now, here's the last verse. Verse 17 to verse 18. Verse 17, it says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Listen to first phrase. Every good gift and every perfect gift. God is good and perfect. Since God is good and perfect, therefore, God has nothing to do with what? With temptation and sin. He is not the one who do business of temptation. But God is the one who gives man every good gift, perfect gift that man's received. And God is unchangeable. In fact, He gave us a good gift, a very good gift, that eternal gift by giving His Son, Jesus Christ. And that's the reason why the heart of the Bible, John 3.16, it says, For God so loved the world, and He gave His only begotten Son. And that is good and perfect gift from above. Friends, God is unchangeable. And that gift is eternal. And that gift is what you need. In your life. Verse 17. The second phrase. God is the father of lights. And he is unchangeable. Indeed. God is the father of perfect lights. The creator of sun. The creator of moon. and The creator of stars. And he even sees his own son to be the light of the world. Jesus Christ, according to John chapter 1, verse 9, Jesus Christ is the true light that gives light to everyone. Listen to John chapter 3, verse 19. This is what the Lord Jesus Christ says. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world and the people love darkness rather than light. Why? Because their works were evil. You see, notice ang mga tao. Huwag imong hisgutan sa pulong sa ginoo. You know what they will say? Ah, ako hisgutan ang pulong sa ginoo. Ning toho ko ginoo. Pero ay ko hisgutan sa Biblia. How in the world you will believe that there's God and yet you are not reading the Bible? If you really believe in God, you need to read the Bible. Because that is what Jesus Christ says. You diligently, you diligently study the scriptures because you think that by them you possess eternal life and this scripture talks about me. You need to study the word of God because this scripture talks about Jesus Christ and His word is what we call the true light. Verse 18, it says, Of His own will, He brought us forth by the word of truth, 
that we might be a kind of first fruit of His creatures. Notice the praise of His own will. Meaning, people cannot come to God by their own will. They need sovereign intervention of God to become Christians. Why? Because it is God who initiates the regeneration of heart. Now listen to book of Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 26. This is what the Bible says. I will give you a new heart. And put a new spirit in you. I will remove your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. So who did it? It is God. I will give you a new heart. And even during the earthly ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. In John chapter 15. Jesus says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And listen to this verse. John chapter 1, verse 12. But as many as receive him, to them he give the right to become a children of God. To those, listen to this, who believe in his name, we were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but what? But of God. Meaning, everything in our regeneration, it is God's business. Human being does not have the capacity to come to God freely. We need to ask God. We need to pray. Why? Because regeneration, regeneration is an act of God, not of humans. It's so clear in verse 18. Of His own will, He brought us forth. Meaning, by to be born again, that is the business of God. Born again people come into the kingdom of God by His will. I will give you the perfect example, the conversion of Apostle Paul in book of Acts chapter 9. During the time, unsa may gipangita ni Pablo? Ang gipangita ni Pablo ang mga tao nga iyang i-persecute. But what happened to him? He encountered Jesus Christ. The same thing in our life. Same thing in our life. What ang mga tagino? Romans chapter 3 is so clear. For no one is righteous and not even one. Nobody seeks God. Why nangita o ginoo? But here's the thing. Nganong ni amang kakaron. Why? Because it is God's will for every person to come to Him and to be born again. I'll say it again. It is not about religion. It is about for you to be reconciled to God. How? Listen to this verse. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Listen. All should come to repentance. Friends, God wants you to know the truth. And that truth, no other than Jesus Christ. This is what Jesus Christ says. I will close in this verse. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you don't have a right relationship to God, if you are doubt in your salvation, I encourage you, come to Jesus. Tell Him, Lord, here I am a sinner. 
I accept you as my Lord and Savior. From now on, you will be my God. Make me a person you wanted me to be. If that is your decision, bow your head and close your eyes. We will pray. Father, we thank you, God, for this wonderful day. We thank you for your word, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, that in spite of what happened, you remain faithful unto us. You know, salamat to Dios sa mga imong gipadala o sab karong adlaw. Mga katauhan nga imong gidala ginong Dios. Father, my prayer, O oh God, nga ang matagpulong nga naitisok sa ilang tagsa-tag sa kakasing-kasing, magpabilin kining buhi, mutubo kini mulambo o mamunga. O gabita ang matag-usak ka na mo, Ginong Diyos, for the expansion of your kingdom. And Father, we just thank you for your goodness and mercy. Dalaygon ka, O God. Dalaygon ka. Takos kang pasidunggan, Takos kang kasalamatan, takos kang himayaw. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Happy Lord's Day to all of you. And may God richly bless you all, spiritually, physically, and financially, for the glory of our living God. Happy Lord's Day. And God bless you all. For the last song, let us sing Completely Done. What reason have I to doubt? Why would I dwell in fear When all I have known is great My future in Christ is clear My sins have been paid in full There's no condemnation I live in the good of this My Father has drowned in me I'm leaving my fears behind me The new has come What you complete Is completely done Where's to Christ The victory won What you complete Is completely Where else with Christ?
peace, their victory won. One year we complete is complete. Complete. 